Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Factorio. We have run into a problem with all of the modules that we've placed, the beacons and everything else that is sucking power. If we check our power, yeah, we are not producing enough. I should be producing approximately 180 megawatts on average and we are producing half as much. I already went ahead and set up as many solar panels and accumulators as I possibly could but I think today it's time to actually supplement this with a little bit of nuclear power. I wanna try this out, never dealt with nuclear power. It is not the best for late game performance, they say, but I can't really confirm this myself. If I'm not mistaken, we've already researched everything concerning nuclear power. Let's see, stronger explosives is the next one. What else do we want? I think at this point I might want to dive into Power Armor Mark II. I actually completely skipped the first Power Armor. I didn't deem it necessary with the small base we're dealing with at the moment. Let me quickly check. Pollution? Yeah, it's slowly getting out of hand. I will have to take care of some more encampments here. But even more importantly, we have some uranium ore. One million. This should be probably last us for the rest of the game. I'm actually not sure. There would be another one over there. This one here is fairly close to water, which we need. And it is also quite protected. It is actually also quite close to the base. I think we should have everything we need from here. So let's get things started with miners. I'm gonna make it go north, just having one output line using yellow transport belts only, I'm assuming. So let's see what we get here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wonderful. Oh, look at this. It actually even already set up the pipes. How very convenient. I was actually a little bit worried about that at first. But it looks as though you can daisy chain them and they are just gonna give the water. Okay, with that out of the way, the next thing we probably need is a centrifuge. And obviously, I forgot the concrete. However, we can take this opportunity to actually connect the power together. Let's see, to make the concrete, we are going to need iron ore. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Stone bricks and water. Power armor has already been researched. Loving that. Laser shooting speed, thank you. Ah, well, you look at that. This is actually not too expensive. Uh, what did I have? Oh, actually, I did not skip the power armor. Okay, maybe I didn't. <laughs> but, you know, we're gonna go for power armor too anyways, right? Let's say we set up something here to craft the concrete temporarily. I wouldn't actually need that many stone bricks, so maybe we are even gonna module it up. Let me actually move this over here. I'm gonna give this a couple of speed modules and then I think we might just be able to copy this over. I'm gonna use my spare offshore pump here in order to bring in the water. We wanna do this here and can we conveniently move over? Of course we can. Like this, I'm gonna need 1.8 stone bricks per second. Let's uh, freaking do this. I think I should still have some electric furnaces. And for now, I just wanna see how quick one of them is going to be. Resource check, 0 0.6. Okay, we don't need that many, even if we speed this up a little bit. I think we might get away with just one. No, unfortunately not quite. We're gonna need at least one more. Okay, so there we go. That's gonna be the stone brick going in. Uh, you know what, I'm just gonna make it easier since this is not really a permanent thing. We're gonna come down around here, split this off and combine the lines. Something like this. Wonderful. Yeah, and then I don't even need all those inserters. And then last but not least, we all wanna bring this into a logistic storage chest. This can also be completely filled up with concrete. For now, I'm just gonna leave it like that. The flashing symbol is gonna let me know where the storage actually is. I just wanted it in order to be able to craft more things, right? We need it for a nuclear reactor, for instance, and also the centrifuge. Come on, that should be enough. Yes, indeed, we can build our first centrifuge. Let's do it. For now, we're just gonna build one. I wanna learn the system. We're also gonna need a nuclear reactor. Let me just grab the materials for those and then we shall experiment around. We are gonna need heat pipes, exchangers and steam turbines as well, but those materials are fairly easy. Okay, we're back. I plotted down the two machines. Looks like the beginning of it is pretty straightforward. We wanna do some uranium processing, as a result of which we get some good and bad uranium. We can do some coverex enrichment in order to transform the bad uranium into good one without any loss, it seems. Well, you, you lose the bad uranium, a little bit of it. Also in here you can build the nuclear fuel cells with the good uranium 
and in here you can also repurpose the used up uranium fuel cells. So the centrifuge is kind of the go-to thing for everything. To get things started I'm just gonna plot this down here and we want to see how things work out. So give me a little bit of power there and what do we want? We want to connect the water that I've already prepared to our miners. They should now be going for it technically. <laughs> we need sulfuric acid. I don't know, I just assumed it was water. Uh, just forget this ever happened. In order to get the water out of there, I'm actually just gonna cut it out and paste it back in. Though at this point, I wish I had more construction robots. Let's maybe build another 5 or 10. Fortunately enough, we have some sulfuric acid right here. This is gonna make it very convenient. Going all the way up, and I'm assuming just initially we're gonna use up a little bit. Ah, oh, come on. No, where did I still had water in the system? But now with replacing all the miners over and over, looks like we got it working. Wonderful. This is gonna be more than enough. We actually don't need this many miners. And now we're getting uranium ore. Just how much do we need? 10 pieces. Uh, looks like we're running out of power again. I mean, this is what we want to fix now with the nuclear power. Crafting time, 12 seconds. A normal inserter is probably gonna do the trick. And afterwards, we're getting two products out of there. So we'll have to see how we want to deal with that. We could, for instance, use a splitter and divide up the bad and good uranium. Let's say we want the good stuff on the right side. That makes sense to me. And then we combine things together. So if we do that, then the good stuff should land on the right side of the belt and the bad stuff on the left side. Cool. So now the only thing we need is another one of these and we probably want to make this expandable. And then at some point we want to come down and do the refinement process. So Coverex enrichment would start right here, going up. Gonna set up an inserter for this one as well. Yeah, so the biggest hurdle is going to be to get the initial 40 good uranium in order to process everything else. So maybe I'm not even gonna do it this way. I'm not too sure yet because there will be a dedicated system to enrichment once we get the first 40 uranium. But to make this more efficient, we need more power. This is not good. The question for now is what do we do with the excess? At some point we cannot unload the machine anymore if we accumulate all of this. So we'll have to figure that out as well. So I think for now I'm just gonna let this craft away. And we will be getting that in the chest until we are ready to deal with it. And until then, I think I might have to just stabilize the power infrastructure with solar panels. One solar panel should be good for 60 kilowatts during the daytime. Let's see, robots, yes, bring me solar panels. That's what I'm talking about. And we're just gonna keep on expanding this infrastructure here as well. Look at that, I'm such an idiot. I didn't hook this up. Man, sometimes... Actually, we can do it like so. I mean, this might help if we actually hook up the rest of our solar panels. Okay, that's actually nice to see. At this point, we are not losing power this dramatically. I just didn't hook up all the solar panels and that would have solved my issue much sooner. However, now our goal is to build another centrifuge. I'm gonna grab some materials for that. Oh, might have been a bit much, but yeah, we can build another centrifuge. I'm also gonna grab more electronic circuits while I'm at it. There, you belong me. Come to papa. 18 uranium later and we still don't have a good one. This is gonna take a really long time. However, now we are not suffering the power issues, which means we can just daisy chain this. And I think for good measure, I'm gonna do a third one. Wonderful. Looks like we could also place some modules in here. Not sure if this is really gonna be worth it or if we should just set up speed modules. Speed modules might be more advantageous in our situation. We'll do the enrichment process here and then everything else I guess can continue. Now as of this point we wanna once again sort out the good uranium, though this really might not be necessary. Ah, will you look at that, we got our first good uranium. 39 to go, should give me enough time to build more centrifuges. So we're gonna use the centrifuge here for the enrichment process. And if we can, I wanna make sure I don't use quite as many materials. And then my suggestion would be to have yet another centrifuge with a system like this. So actually let me copy this over like so. And that means the products would be pushed between those two machines producing more and more. But I'm not sure if it works like that because at some point, of course, we also have to extract the additional materials. 
But I guess for now, we just gotta make sure we have enough space. So maybe I'm just gonna extract this here into a storage chest. Holy cow, this is a really low chance. 0.7%. Is this really it or can I improve on that? It's kind of crazy, admittedly. Alright, I actually had a much better idea. What if we put everything into a chest so we don't even have to decide where it's landing on the belt. Everything is gonna land in this chest and then we're gonna use some logic. I should still have a filter inserter. We're gonna place that right there. Connect a red wire to the chest and to a power pole. The power pole is only useful so I can actually see the materials we are tracking. But then click on the inserter. We are going to filter out the good uranium and we want to test if we have a certain amount in the chest. Let's say we want at least 10 in the chest and the reason for that I will show you in just a second. 10 isn't very specific, it could probably also be less. But the fact is we're going to use an inserter to automatically take all the materials that is required in order to get the enrichment process going. And we are not going to touch this chest with the filter inserter just yet. We're then going to extract all those materials again. So the output here is going to come out and it's going to be directly inserted again into the machine. Unless we have way more than enough, then it's going to accumulate in this chest and therefore we will be able to extract it with the filter inserter. And that should be how easy it is. I just want to whitelist the good uranium. Then I'm going to put it on the left side of this belt. And it's actually joining up with the rocket fuel that I'm producing at the moment at the base. Let me just quickly show you that. I did it right here somewhere. I just added an additional chemical plant in order to make the solid fuel. Then I used the solid fuel and some light oil in order to produce the rocket fuel. Then everything is just going all the way up here until we actually reach the rocket fuel site. And so this is going to happen here as soon as we have the first excess good uranium trickling in. Now I think we should be able to move this one over. I don't think we're going to need the space otherwise. And I'm not sure just how many of these machines we're going to need. I'm assuming we're going to figure that out sooner than later. Or actually maybe later because it takes a really long time to get the initial first 40. And I'm going to say it now, uranium 235 going. Well, I mean, we're already 5 in, just 35 to go. How is our power doing? Yeah, still bad. I think I'm going to continue with my solar panel project now. Okay guys, I had to rearrange a couple of things because it was just taking such a long time to get those ingredients. I'm actually still not done. Look at how much I've mined already here and we only ended up with 23 uranium. Once we got the 40, everything is gonna be fine, but until then it's quite tedious. So I decided to beacon everything up and also put some productivity modules in here. At the moment we're actually not getting the ore quick enough. Part of the reason is the power production. It is not at its full efficiency. However, I realized the enrichment is never going to be quick enough with a 60 second crafting time. So I also beaconed this one up, gave it some productivity modules. And so instead of having a single chest, I daisy chained them. So the line is now coming down here, going into the first chest. There is still the filter inserter that is going to extract material if we have more than 10 in the entire system. So also this secondary chest, which is a copy of the first system. I did that because the way I had it here at the bottom, I couldn't set up a secondary centrifuge. But now hopefully this is going to be rather quick. Maybe I'm going to disassemble a couple of these guys in the future. However, everything is joining down here. So as soon as we get the excess enriched uranium, it is going all the way down here, joining the spelt and therefore also producing the fuel. After that, we should be able to actually get some power out of the system. But I guess until this happens, we still have to wait for this to fuel up. I'm going to make sure that I take everything out and actually put it in the first machine because just the 40 pieces and then we are going to be golden. In the meantime, I'm also going to beacon this up and then we can think about the setup. Now, it would probably be best... Where's my stuff? Here. Nuclear reactor. If we actually put a bunch of these together. Now, this is going to be interesting for me to explore because I basically don't have a lot of experience with it. All I know is what you can gather from the descriptions. We need this nuclear reactor in order to create a lot of heat. Then we extract the heat using the heat pipes into a heat exchanger that we have to fill with water, which is generating steam for these steam turbines. 
So it seems to be a pretty straightforward process. I just assume on a grander scale, it's going to be interesting how to design it in a nice and compact way. For now, I guess we could just get the fuel out of there, see what it actually does if we start to fuel this up. Now, let me see. If we daisy chain a couple of these guys, um, like so, they get an adjacent bonus, but they have to be right adjacent to each other, not diagonally. And then I guess we would want to supply the fuel. We go up a little bit and we also split this up. And on the other side, the same story. We can then just use a bunch of inserters. Where are they? Yeah, maybe that is going to be reasonable. Next, we need a bunch of heat pipes and heat exchangers. Let's get started with those as well. We can extract the heat like so. We probably can just do it with one pipe, but looks nifty. Yeah, on the top we have the output for the steam, at the, the bottom for the pipes, and then we can daisy chain some water stuff. Okay, so if we did something like this, this would allow us to bring the heat pipes forward a little bit. I believe the heat pipes lose heat over a distance, so maybe it would be best to bring this down a little bit. So grab that and bring it down just a tad, and then I guess we could just daisy chain as many as we need of them. The question is just the ratio, and I don't think Rate Calculator is gonna do that for me. Well, we'll have to see, I guess. Now, there's another problem, right? We do get a byproduct of used-up fuel cells that we have to put back into a centrifuge. How do we get those out of there? Oh yeah, that's gonna be a problem. It might be easier to make this belt go all the way around, and so we also have an easy way of extracting the empty cells. Say we go up here. Can I... Uh, no, 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 no. I wanna do that. Hop under the pipes and then we come around here. And we want to go back, I guess, join the line. Let's see, maybe it's going to be better to use a merge technique here. That means all the full cells are going to be on the right side of the belt as they go around. And then if I extract the empty fuel cells, they're going to be on the left side. Hold on, we need to move this. Oh, can I do that? I think so. Good thing I left a little bit of space. But yeah, that essentially means we will be able to use a centrifuge, for instance, right here, in order to do that other recipe. What was it? It was... Yeah, nuclear fuel reprocessing. This is gonna create some bad uranium, so we also have to get that out of there somehow. We could do that right here, for instance. Go up a little bit and over. Hop over there, hop over here. Oh, this is perfect. Now we can just join the line, basically. Let me get rid of that power pole. We're gonna solve that differently, but there we go. Joining back in the beginning of the processing line. We are already up to 32 uranium. Hooray! This is gonna snowball, hopefully extremely quickly now. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some more materials. Give me copper. 500 advanced circuits. It's just kind of crazy. Well, fortunately enough, not all of my machines are working at the moment because I decided I'm gonna wait researching a little bit to get my power problem under control. And of course, every now and then I'm gonna place whatever solar panels and capacitors I'm getting from the system. We should already think about how we want to extract this. Now, I really don't know anything about the ratios. I want to kind of figure this out on my own for the first time. And then, of course, afterwards, I'm always looking into it. But I'm just having fun figuring things out. So we'll have to see how this exactly turns out. But what if we went ahead and actually brought this over, like so, for instance. We also connect everything together here. And this way, we could extract the steam towards the right side instead of up. This will make the contraption more or less expandable, hopefully. And we can then worry about the next step on the right side, instead of estimating how much space we need. Looks like we will also be able to daisy chain a whole bunch of these guys and they will provide the power. We will see just how far we can actually go with this. And then I guess we could just go ahead and copy this over like so. Yeah, let's maybe start with three rows for now. Looks kind of reasonable. And then, of course, we would also have to power all of these guys up. Okay, nice. How far are we? 36. Come on! Let's take a few of these guys apart. We don't need them all anymore. 38. We are almost there. Let me check the ratio very briefly with this. So we are overproducing the bad uranium at the moment. I guess we could continue and copy the setup once more over. So we have three processing units or we reduce the amount of machines we have here, or how much we beacon them up. Okay then, let's see this happen. 38, 
39. Where is the 40th? Come on. Uh, hallelujah. Finally, this took a really long time, but I'm really excited now because the process is going to start. Get that sucker in. Oh, I think, yeah, <laughs> the machine missed it. Okay, well, I'm going to do it myself. There we go. Oh my gosh, finally. And there we go. All the good stuff is now being exported and it is being recycled into the system. And theoretically, my filter inserters should always be disabled because there's never going to be more than 10 in the system unless we have way too much of it. Now, in the beginning, I might have to babysit it for just a little while because, of course, a lot of it is going to end up in the second machine, which eventually isn't going to matter. But in the beginning, it matters. So now I only have to run this process like 40 times in order to fill up the other machine. But in the meantime, I guess we can reduce the amount of machines we have here. So I'm going to get rid of another one of these. Maybe one improvement we can make on the system is actually have a splitter. I think this might make for a better split here. So I can get rid of that and do something like this. Hooray! This feels really good. So now we will probably figure out what happens once we load this up with some fuel. Hopefully not everything is going to explode. And will you look at that, this is already looking much, much better. I left the game running for quite a while with just one machine and once I had enough, I also enabled the second machine. I figured we want to do things a little bit quicker with the red belt and the stack inserters. However, at this point I feel really good about it because soon enough we will have the 10 uranium that we want so we can extract out of the system. Actually, I had to upgrade the number to 50 because using stack inserters is resulting in some issues in that regard since we can pick up 10 items at a time. Anyway, my point is soon enough we're gonna extract some uranium out of here. So this should be working and then it's coming down here to the rocket fuel. Wonderful. Maybe then we can finally see the first steam turbine here in action. One more thing I believe I want to do is also hook up these inserters here and I want to tell them that if we don't have enough uranium-238, we want to produce some more. So bad uranium, if we have fewer than let's say a thousand or so, then we want those inserters to function. And like that they are only going to extract more uranium if we desperately need it because let's say this chest is getting empty. I want to make sure all the inserters are hooked up and we should be able to just copy over the settings of the first one. Oh no, what did I do? I think I took something apart. Ooh, that's not good, not good. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I totally took apart the stack inserter here and that messed everything up. Be careful, Nathan. Just be freaking careful, okay? Still, I believe we are now at the point where we are overproducing, at least from the looks of it. And yes, indeed. Now we're also producing the fuel. Now, we will probably need more of them. Uranium fuel. What are you talking about? What What did I miss? Oh, this is disturbing. <laughs> wow, okay. I should have checked that. This is extremely disappointing. Now I have to rethink this a little bit. Let's see. We don't... Oh, gosh. Okay. Rocket fuel. I'm gonna keep this for later. Okay. The way I think I'm gonna do this is we wanna sort out the bad stuff on the left side here. Hold the phone. Yeah, bad stuff left side. We make this go down at this point. We then use a long-handed inserter that we're also gonna hook up to the system. Uh, do I have some cabling? Let's see, we have this chest nearby. So we're gonna hook that up and we do the same thing here at the bottom. Give me long-handed inserter, cabling, hook that up. And we also want to tell this guy to check if the threshold of bad uranium is less than 1000. So now they should be disabled unless we are missing some of the bad uranium here. Let me just make sure this goes approximately in the same direction. Okay, and I guess here at the bottom we can actually meet up together. We actually need 19 times more of the bad uranium in order to do that and also a little bit of iron. This is gonna suck. <laughs> Blue inserter here, long-handed inserter there. We actually need a different type of machine for this. Now we need materials. You know what? I'm actually going to stop the production of fuel cells. And we're gonna use the belt to get some iron upstairs instead. Wonderful. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh man, I wanna see power. We deserve power. Okay, there it is. One assembler for you. You wanna craft the precious uranium fuel cells. And now that is gonna take 10 seconds. And after that, we'll have to see just how long it takes to actually get used up. 
want to bring this over here that should be good and then finally into the system okay that's what i'm talking about it takes an enormously long time so theoretically now we should fill up the belt on the right side and we take out the empty fuel cells on the left side so now the temperature is going up and we should also see these guys heat up actually let me see yeah oh my gosh it is actually working nothing is exploding so far that's good no input fluid oh i forgot the water no we cannot mix fluids here but it is not mixing fluids okay i know what to do we need to make a blueprint and let the robot build it <laughs> no <laughs> I'm playing too long, guys. I lost focus. Of course, this is the steam output and not the water input. I'm just a freaking idiot. Look at this. We already got our first empty fuel cells. They, uh... <laughs> they should be picked up by this machine. Oh, this is hilarious. Yeah, I need to take a break, guys. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the water in from the north. For now, this is just going to be here. So I'm gonna build a couple of heat exchangers and we should be getting the water in. Okay, gosh, please let this work. Yes, okay, we have steam. Of course, now we kind of have to drain certain parts of the system. Ah, hallelujah, 5.8 megawatts. Are you serious? <laughs> okay, we are now producing enough power. That is for sure. Admittedly, this is looking fairly promising so far. I have to say and that is just one steam turbine now i'm not exactly sure if this can be wasteful at all it looks as though the fuel cells are always going to be used up so maybe there's a way to shut down this while we are not needing the power we'll have to observe this but yeah just one freaking steam engine and we can have hopefully many more i mean it looks as though it can easily keep up the temperature here with all the boilers Okay guys, this is Nathan from the future and I played around with the technology here a little bit. It was a little bit tedious to play around with everything, but approximately 12 boilers per pump is what you need, I think. I installed a mod that allows me to actually play some water tiles just because it was just getting too frustrating there. <laughs> but I still had fun, don't get me wrong. Let's just go ahead and hook up all the things. You can see you can actually daisy chain quite a few of them and they are working at full efficiency. Right now they are not producing all their potential power because we don't need it. Also it looks like one nuclear reactor per row is enough, so I activated two of them, two of them, and this is enough to keep the temperatures up. At least enough to produce the full potential power and fill up everything with steam. The only thing I'm not sure yet is how far can I take this? So far it seems to be working, maybe we can get one more in the joint, I'll have to see. But for now, I'm actually pretty happy. So at this point, after wasting a couple of hours, I would say we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.